your little fantasy. It's uh, you know how you always wanted to be on The Bachelor because yeah. they they set you up in paradise. Mm -hmm. They're kind of setting you up with all these happy moments with some girl you don't know. But what's weird? Pretend like you guys. So it's like, but then it's like uh, pretend, you, and then you start joking like, is this what they think our kids would look like? Ha ha, hilarious! And you're there. All right, now look at each other. You know, my arms around her. I'm looking at her. All right, guys, you just saw a clip from one of the hottest sports shows around, Covino and Rich on Sirius XM, and with me is one of the co-hosts. That's right. It's Steve Covino, Ace, since you're a New York transplant, but you're in LA now, you gotta do this. No, no, that's the important I'm a lefty, I can't do that. That's what you, aren't you a lefty that's in baseball? Like a, I can't even bend my hand like that. Did, what, did, was that was that from an accident, I like a baseball even, accident I don't even know how to do that, I don't know. Can I give like a Vatos Locos or something you like that? You can always give Vatos Locos. Vatos Locos hey, forever. In Latin Nation, you can always do that. This is like, you know, on the East Coast, yeah. this is like Cowabunga. Well, that's, but you're on the West Coast now, homie. So I got all right, Cowabunga. Yeah. Or you can throw up West Side. <laughs> All right, West Side, okay. I'll do it, I'll I, think do it. We, I think we have now a bunch of people pissed off at okay, us because yeah. we're throwing up way too many gang signs. Yeah. But um, the reason <laughs> I brought you here is because, man, uh, I love listening to you talk about sports. And I do sports, you. but like pop culture and a lot of the, the stuff that goes and surrounds athletes in their crazy lives. Yeah, 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 the, the lifestyle, right? Right. The, the stories behind the story, not the X's and O's. Right. We look at it this way, there's a, a lot of TV shows mm -hmm. and radio shows, guys with suits and mustaches right. that give you the stats and they right. break it down. We're not that show. We right. want to know what they're doing, you know, after the game. Right. Where they're partying, what they're wearing, who they're dating. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we want to talk about Tom Brady's haircut and things right. like that. You know, and, and his lifestyle and his moat and his house and things right. like that. So it's it's the stories behind the story when nobody's really talking about. That's what we do, and we we do it good. Best show on Sirius XM, I swear. That's it is. Ask my parents. Yeah, Ask I am sure. I'm sure they yeah. have a good opinion. Yeah, of you. my Hopefully mom loves it. So I always see you, you know, because I cover a lot of mixed martial arts and boxing, and I see a lot of the boxing events. So I want to talk to you about some uh, Latino-related stories that we've been covering. Um, they're always saying boxing is dead, and they're always looking for that fight that. that's going to bring it back. You were there, and you saw the Abner Mars, the Santa oh, Cruz fight. Love uh, it. Incredible classic. What do you think about that, and what is it going to do for, for boxing and Latino boxers in boxing? First off, I hate when people say boxing is dead. Boxing's not going anywhere. You know, the sweet science is not going anywhere. It's the best sport in the world. It's true combat at, at its rawest form. I love it. I grew up watching it. Uh, you know, my, my uncles brought me up watching boxing, mm -hmm. so I love it, and I hate when people say mm -hmm. that. And think of how much money it draws, and right. think of the event that it is, you right. know? The event I saw you at, Abner Mara's Santa yeah. Cruz, huge. Man. Highest rated awesome. ESPN boxing uh, show in a long time. So like hyped years. up, so hyped up. Stars come out to watch these guys. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, fight of the year, potential fight of the year, I don't think a fight like that is gonna take it to that next level, I just they're don't. Not, they're not big enough stars? Exactly, no, because, you know, the mainstream audience are a bunch of bobos and mm -hmm. they want to see the heavyweight. Now, the no other thing that we've been uh, covering is, I did the interview with Ronda Rousey's mom, Dr. Oh, Anne Maria DeMars, man. that went viral. Congratulations and was talking, on well, that, well, man. Well, thank you. I'm going to show the clip right now really quick okay. to people so they see what it's about and I'm going to ask you about it. All so right. check this out. You don't mind and you don't have to, you know, we were talking about it when we started the interview. Um, you specifically, Edmund, her, co her coach now, who I believe is her striking coach, but he's, he's the head coach. Are, are, do you, are, are you at issues with the way that he's kind of corralling her and... I think Edmund is a terrible coach, and I will say it publicly. I think he's a terrible coach. I think he hit the lottery when Ronda walked in there. She was winning before she ever met him. She was probably won 99% of the judo matches she ever fought in. She had won the, you know, she'd won the Junior Worlds when she was 17. She got a bronze medal in the Olympics. She got a silver medal in the World Championship. She was one of the top athletes in the world when she walked in there, and he wouldn't even give her the time of day for months. Somebody like that is a terrible coach. So as you can see, Ronda's mom's getting involved in her stuff. What do you think? Now, Ronda's mom is an ex-judo champion, so she has a good opinion. What yeah. do you think about her getting in the mix and talking about a coach like that? Uh, well, you know, now we can see where Ronda gets it from, right? She's a strong, opinionated woman who, uh, who doesn't hold back, right? So you got to give her credit for that. But it's embarrassing. It's bad business. I, I mean, I think it's funny. Don't get me wrong. It's funny. It's entertaining. Great job getting that. But... You know, I, I would be so embarrassed if my mom came into my studio, or you know, imagine if, if your family came in and talked to the producers of the show, said, hey, the lighting's all terrible here, you guys aren't doing a, a good job, or my mom started critiquing my producer, that's bad business, and you know, it, it just makes everything awkward for, for Rhonda, mm -hmm. you know, because now she's gonna be, you know, she's forced to pick between her trainer, her her, her trainer and her mom. Right. And that's an and awkward scenario. And she's picking scenario. her trainer because right. we went we went to uh, the media event and we got uh, a response. She basically said that you know she doesn't want the media talking to her mom. She'll let her mom have it, but she you know believes in her coach and her coach basically said I will not talk about bad about anyone's mom. The high road is always the best road. That, that was that was a good move. You don't want to talk about anyone's mama. You know what I mean? So good move on his part. Especially it, Ronda 
Rousey's mom. Yeah, yeah. Because even if Ronda Rousey's mom is crazy, she's not going to let you have it. Yeah, she would have whooped his ass, and then she would have embarrassed him again. You know who doesn't hold back? It's you. And we're going to be right back with a little bit more of Steve Covino talking about sports right here on Latin Nation.